item for a statutory public inquiry into Essex Partnership University Trust. Matthew got poorly and Matthew needed help. He actually did ask for help himself and he was admitted to the Linden Centre on the 7th of November 2012. It had taken a year, um, five mental health assessments to secure that placement for him. We thought, great, he's going to get some help now. Seven days later, my son was dead. The first thing was a call from Matthew's doctor on the board to tell me Matthew had been found hanging, it doesn't look good. That was the first lie. He'd been dead over an hour when the doctor made that call. Day three of his admission, Matthew had called his father and said that he'd been drugged and raped. I called the ward. I was advised that Matthew was in art class. It's part of his delusion. Come in on the Friday, give him time to settle on the ward. So I never got to see him alive again. The post-mortem was carried out. Um, he was found with bruises above both ankles. Um, he had needle wounds in his groin to this day unexplained. The ligature was destroyed by Essex Police. No photographs were taken. The inquest was two years after Matthew died in January 15. Staff that we would have liked at the inquest couldn't be found. Main staff that were involved in Matthew's case weren't at the inquest, weren't called. It was left as an open narrative so they couldn't prove suicide. I then went to the Parliamentary Health Ombudsman um, who then carried out an investigation. Someone else went through the medical records. They picked up, I think, 19 instances of failings in Matthew's care. Anything that was of a criminal nature, they refused to investigate and even touch on and would not publish the results. Another battle. Everything's been a battle. November 16, I'd asked questions of Essex Police and they did reopen certain parts of the investigation. They interviewed more staff. I had a second pathologist look at the photographs. The retired Home Office pathologist, he had dealt with numerous cases by hanging and he said that it didn't look like wounds conducive to the method that he's meant to have used to have hung with. But without the ligature, it would have been hard to have any arguments to get the case reopened. So again, we hit another brick wall. I'd also been speaking to the health and safety executive. Somebody realised that Matthew's file was empty and then later on to tell me there was no file. Yeah, Essex Police are meant to have submitted a riddle report, which is a health and safety report when there's an accident or a death. So he started looking at the evidence I'd collated with seven families. Four and a half years later, there was a prosecution. The trust pleaded guilty to the causation of 11 deaths, Matthews included. A fine ensued of 1.5 million. Then I think because not one member of staff was held to account. And in fact, the person in charge of the estate's management shortly after that case was awarded an MBE. January 17, Essex Police started looking at corporate manslaughter. By then I'd found quite a number of families so now it turns out the case for 125 deaths by ligature for man, corporate manslaughter were being investigated. This was whittled down to 25 deaths and then whittled down to 10. Imagine the evening I spent in the room with 25 families who were told that 15 of those families, sorry, we're dropping those cases. People were sobbing. I had to relive what had gone on, go through it all, talk other evidence, only for it to be quashed. And then the last 10, um, were also quashed. And then we're told at each opportunity, changes have been made, lessons have been learned, staff have been trained, the wards are now safe, and then another patient dies by the same means. I started a petition calling for a public inquiry into Matthew's death. I had got, I think, 47,000 signatures, and then government was going to close down. There was going to be a general election. I need 100,000 signatures to get this to debate. And then they dropped the bombshell that the petition will postpone until new government. Your petition will go to zero. So this is on the Friday. I've got till Tuesday, November the 5th, midnight, to get enough signatures to get 100,000. Sunday morning I woke up with a brainstorm. I designed banners. I designed leaflets. I went to Downing Street. I put them up on the barriers there. I contacted all the press I knew. Barbara Keeley came down, the Shadow Minister for Mental Health. We went viral. The most, I think it was 12,000 an hour signing. We ended up at midnight on the 5th of November with 106,580 UK signatures. We know we had Boris Johnson looking at that. We had the Mayor of London looking, watching. We waited a year for that debate. And when we finally got the debate, not one Essex MP turned out in support. There was no debate, it was just a statement. Nadine Doris, who was then Minister for Mental Health, she'd chosen to call an independent inquiry into Essex Mental Health Services. 
It's not in public, it's behind closed doors, it has no statutory powers, we are not engaging with it, we are calling on the government right to this day to convert it and add the statutory powers so as we can bring staff in under oath. This is now a big public interest issue, it's not just Essex, it is nationwide and it will continue unless there is accountability called the statutory inquiry in Essex. If other trusts need to have a public inquiry as well, do that. But do not muddy the waters by adding them all together. Each trust needs to be examined on its own failings. The inquiry itself has already announced that they've uncovered 1,500 deaths because that was a number the trust gave us. We don't know the figure because there was no records kept. And out of the 1,500 number they've picked out the air, they're saying 900 of those, they don't actually know how they died or what happened. That in itself should set alarm bells. The coroner's picked up now in two inquests just recently. The trust has not been given full disclosure of evidence. So if that's being picked up now, it puts into question all the all the inquests that have happened previously. We have a website, Cure Mental Health. There's a join us page. On there are all the links to the social media that the team are running. There's a link to our petition. It's unfortunate we're having to do another petition, but we're doing it to raise awareness and we ask share that out a lot of our stories are on there get involved with us write to your mp just get that message out and if there are families that have been affected or failed by it it's mental health services patients you've lost loved ones you're being abused now to get in touch um, we have solicitors that are working for us on a pro bono basis and this is for me 10 years down the line matthew's legacy i refuse to allow his death to be in vain and I think we have power in numbers.